Hello! In this video tutorial we will have an exact look at how to work with the most important components of a Ventus scene, the nodes. We will see the different types of nodes and their characteristics and how to use them. Also we will learn how to bind nodes so that you can manipulate and use all the inputs of the scene to your needs. When creating a completely new scene and switching to the logic view you can see you are working inside the only placed layer, this 3D layer. So here we can use nodes of all of the three different types directly. Hierarchy, content and layer nodes. We had a pretty close look at those already when discussing the respective editors in the toolbox. Each node belongs to exactly one of these categories and each type can only be used in the according editor. Content nodes in the content editor, hierarchy nodes in the hierarchy editor and layer nodes in the layer editor. You can distinguish the different types of nodes with the help of their brackets around the icons. Hierarchy nodes all have vertical brackets. Content nodes have horizontal ones and layer nodes only have the corners of the brackets. Almost each node has inputs and outputs. Inputs can be used to change the exact behavior of the node. Outputs are generated by the node automatically during each frame. Those outputs can be used as inputs of other nodes again. Inside a 3D layer you can place a hierarchy node to tell the render engine of Ventus to do one specific step. A cube node for example will generate a cube geometry that will be passed to the GPU to be rendered each frame using the defined inputs. An axis will translate, rotate and scale all following geometries. And a material will color all geometries behind it. In general the hierarchy works just like in any other 3D software. A node affects all of its child nodes. A child of a node are all the nodes to the right of it. Siblings are above and below the node and the parent node is the one to the left. When you have two different geometries and put an axis in front of both, you can move both with it. And you can move them individually by placing separate axes in front of each of them. The same applies to materials. A material will be applied to all of its children nodes. When rendering, the engine will start on the top left and go to the bottom right to render the scene. So everything placed on top will be rendered before everything placed on the bottom. Even when they are at the perfectly same position, you can see that only the red rectangle will be rendered, because it was placed below the blue one and thus was rendered last, and overrides the blue one. This only applies as long as the rectangles have the same position. If you move the blue rectangle in 3D space towards the camera, you can see that now it occludes the red rectangle as expected. You can tell the designer where to put your nodes on the hierarchy editor by using the indicator arrows while dragging and dropping. An arrow to the right indicates that the drop node will become a child of the target node. An arrow to the top or bottom will result in a sibling on the respective side of the target node. There are two types of arrows to the left. The simple one shows that the dropped node will be the parent of the target node and the arrow with the additional bar on the side shows that the dropped node will be the new parent of all of the siblings of the target node. The very last operation is only allowed on the first sibling. Every hierarchy node can be blocked and inactivated. You can inactivate a node either by using the according input property or by using Ctrl and A. Inactivating a node will tell the renderer to completely ignore the node. It will just jump over to the first child in the tree and continue the render process there. You can block a node again by using the property or control B. Blocking a node will stop the render process directly at that node and will continue the render process on the next sibling. This will effectively disable the whole subtree of the blocked node. This way single nodes or a whole subtree of the hierarchy can be temporarily disabled in a very easy way. You can hide a whole subtree of a node by right clicking it. It will still affect the render process but it will not be shown in the editor anymore. To show it again you can right click it again. You can select several nodes by holding the shift key and clicking the nodes one after another. By default when you select a node you will select the whole subtree of that node. So if you delete a selected node you will delete all of its children as well. 
In order to only select that single node and only delete that one, you need to hold control while clicking it. When deleting a node in the hierarchy tree, the parent of the deleted node becomes the parent of all of its children. You can copy and paste nodes in several ways. Using Ctrl C and Ctrl V with the different types of selections is one way of them. But you can also use drag and drop options. When dragging a node normally, it will be moved to the target place. When you hold Ctrl during dropping, it will be copied there. Instead of releasing the left mouse button, you can also shortly click the right button in order to copy the node there, but not ending the dragging process. This way you can copy nodes to several places in a shorter amount of time. You can also create a linked copy instead of a simple one. This will place the exact node to a second location in the hierarchy tree. The renderer then renders this node twice. This saves some performance since Ventus only needs to validate the inputs and outputs of the node once in order to render it twice or even more often. Also it can make the handling of a scene easier when all inputs of a node should be exactly the same in the different places, since you only need to change one of them. You can only make a linked copy of a node with all of its children. When you drag a node that you selected holding control, you cannot create the linked copy. Instead of changing the position of geometries by using axes, you can also use the in renderer edit mode. Turn it on with this button or by clicking in the renderer window and hitting the tab key. In this mode you can fly around with a free flight camera. With it you can move around the scene by holding down the right mouse button and using the WASD keys. You can click on an object and hold the ALT key to orbit around with a left drag. You can move the camera with the middle mouse button. You may also turn on the isolate mode by double clicking an object in the scene or setting a render point on a hierarchy node or layer node with this button or Ctrl R. This will make all other objects invisible and only render that one. All controls for the previous mode stay. Now let us actually transform the object. You can turn on each of the three transformation modes by pressing the according button. You can move, rotate and scale the object. The rotation will be handled object oriented by default, which rotates the rotation axis in a way that it can be handled intuitively. When using property orientation by clicking that button, this adjustment is left out and you will just affect the according properties on an axis. With these tools you can also choose the explore and change your scene in the renderer instead of the hierarchy. This is all about working with hierarchy nodes in the hierarchy editor and the renderer window. Let us start on working with the content editor. You can make your hierarchy node visible in the content editor by selecting it. Thus a hierarchy node has two representations, one in the hierarchy editor and one in the content editor. Content nodes can only be placed in the content editor and are also only visible there. Also, content nodes do nothing else than just generating outputs depending on the given inputs. They do not affect the behavior of the renderer. But the outputs can be bound to the inputs of any other node. A mover is a very simple example of a content node. It generates values moving between two defined input values in a specific manner. You can choose whether it should swing up and go down or go up only, if it should use a linear function or sine or cosine function, or just alternate between the two values or generate random values in the defined frequency. We can for example generate values between 0 and 360 and increase the duration to 5 seconds and bind the output to the y rotation of an axis affecting a geometry. To bind the rotation, we first select the axis and find the Y rotation input property and drag and drop the name of it onto the mover node inside the content editor. Now the properties are bound to each other and the torus rotates around the Y axis. To unbind the property, you can either click the arrow and then the cross next to the unwanted binding, or you can click the bottommost cross to unbind all properties between the two nodes. 
Also, you can right-click the property name a little longer to bring up the context menu. Here you can go to a node that is bound to the property. Or you can delete the binding from here with a cross next to it. Lastly, you can delete all bindings to a node by selecting it and pressing Shift Delete. When binding properties, always have in mind that you have to bind the input to the output property. Also, each input property can only be bound to exactly one output. But you can bind several inputs to the same output. You can bind a property that is present on several nodes to a single output by selecting all of the needed nodes with shift and click, and then dragging and dropping the property onto the wanted node. While several nodes are selected, the property editor will try to show all properties all selected nodes have in common. Once bound, content nodes are only visible when a hierarchy node is shown in the content editor that gets one of its inputs from that content node, directly or indirectly. Content nodes that are connected to one of the selected hierarchy nodes indirectly without providing any output property to them will be collapsed under the nearest shown content node. So in order to show the whole network of your nodes in the content editor, you might need to uncollapse some nodes by right-clicking them. In order to have anything on screen in your scene, you will at least need one layer node. There are basically two kinds of layers, 2D layers and 3D layers. While 2D layers and 3D layers draw something on screen directly, there are more specific layers that will only change the behavior of a group of layers or structure your scene or project. In the current scene, we only have one layer, which is the 3D layer we are currently working in. To add new layers, you can either use the toolbox, the layer category is the place to search for all layers, or you can use the plus button on the top of the layer editor. When adding a 2D layer, for example a color layer node, we can see how it occludes the 3D layer. Layers will be rendered just like the hierarchy, from top to bottom. And just like the rectangles earlier, the layer rendered later will occlude everything that was rendered before. When switching the order of the layers, our 3D layer is in front again and the 2D layer is used as a background. We cannot only work inside a 3D layer like we did before, also 2D layers can have more nodes inside. To jump into a layer, press the pencil icon in front of the layers icon in the layer editor. Here you can see the color layers root node in the top left corner of the content editor. The hierarchy editor is disabled completely, as the 2D layer has no hierarchy at all. Nevertheless, you can create and use content nodes in here and bind the outputs to the inputs of the color layers root node. When jumping inside the 3D layer by again pressing that pencil, you can see the layer root node and the hierarchy on the top left. It works just like every other hierarchy node, except for that you cannot delete or move it. Here you can change all properties specific to the 3D layer, like the used camera, 3D engine, ambient occlusion and the like. Again, this can be bound to any other node in the layer. When uncollapsing the layer in the layer editor by right-clicking on it or left-clicking the arrow on the left side, you can see all properties that all layers have in common, like the blending, layout or effects, and you can see the exposed properties from inside the layer. For example, the color node by default exposes the color property. So all layer-specific properties can be found inside the layer in the hierarchy or content editor, and all common properties are found outside the layer editor. Here we also find the exposed properties from inside the layer. In order to expose a property, you can click the white rectangle on the left to the property name. Now it will be accessible from outside the layer as well. To revert this, you can right-click the rectangle. The last kind of layers is the layer group. In it you can place several other layers and change the blending, layout and effects for the whole group. A layer switch is a layer group that only shows one of its children at a time. A scene layer loads another scene with all its layers and handles them like they were its children. Again, you can apply blending, layout and effects to all layers in the loaded scene using the properties of the layer. The template layer uses the template engine to load scenes and drive their animations, but except for this just works like a scene layer. 
The template engine is a very big and advanced topic and therefore will be discussed in its own tutorial series. Lastly, the PSD import layer loads a PSD file and creates several layers out of the layers inside that file. Blending modes and the layout of these layers are copied over as well. Again, they are handled like they were inside a layer group. This now covers how to work with Ventus nodes and how to bind them together to make them dependent on each other and use their results as inputs of other nodes. In the next tutorial we will see how exactly geometries work and how to show images in your Ventus project.